Hey guys, Derek Best, Beacon Fight for Life. Um, it's said that 20% of 20, 25% of these of people living in Australia will experience a mental health crisis sometimes in the next 12 months. So my way of thinking is that, you know, why don't we give information or knowledge to people um, to avoid them or help them before they go into a crisis? Because my, again, my ultimate goal is to reduce the number of people taking their own life. So I want to try and try, or I'm going to help assist with them not to get to the crisis situation. So today I'm here with Janine Wood, who is the co-founder, uh, which started uh, No Limits Perth and helps people going through a crisis or uh, in a crisis um, from Yanship to Frio. So first of all, g'day Janine, how are you going? Good, thank you. Awesome. So you're a co-founder, who, who are the other co-founders? Uh, co-founded with two police officers, Debbie and Belinda. Oh nice. Um, why do you do this? For all three of us, um, we all have had a lived experience. Um, and we wanted to reach out to people in crisis and offer them hope. Okay, so what is, I mean, again, when I, when I think crisis in, in for giving out, you know, um, um, goods and, you know, you give, you've got everything here. Um, I would think of domestic violence, but I'm guessing it's more than that. Crisis could come in every um, shape and form, really. Crisis means, and it's not a, it's not a respect to a person either. Crisis could mean your house is burnt down. Crisis could mean that there's a flood. Um, it yep. could mean that perhaps um, you've lost your job. You don't know how you're going to feed your family. You don't know where you're going to get food to put on your table. You don't know how you're going to pay your rent. Um, crisis comes in every single type of form. So oh well, you opened my eyes to that, then thinking of those few things. like So it could be a, a short-term thing for someone because you know they they actually had a job, they've lost right. their job, and they're just in between jobs. Yeah, that's right. So, what about if there's someone watching this that you know they're in a situation where they need to get out, but they don't think they can do it? What would the process be for them? I think for us, that's one of the ways that we offer hope to somebody to say that you don't have to stay in your circumstance, or you might just feel alone in your circumstance to think that nobody's experienced this. You wouldn't know where to turn. You wouldn't know who to ask for help. But through our organisation, helping people in crisis really start over. And um, we've got access to a huge network of people who are able to offer different forms of assistance. So we are not the, the solution, we're not the answer to everything, mm. but we're the stepping stone to a long-term solution, hopefully. That's the point. So you, someone that's either already got a house or somewhere to live, then that's where you start. So yes, so it just depends on the person, on the situation. So if obviously you're homeless at this time, um, it would be, we could link you into um, uh, the Department of um, Communities or we would link you in with Homes West or um, anywhere that even Salvation Army places where they're actually are able to offer you accommodation. Um, if they can't offer you a your own accommodation, perhaps they've got shared accommodation or other accommodation options. Okay. So once you've got your accommodation, that's where we really start. Um, so we take items that would otherwise end up in landfill, mm -hmm. household <coughs> items, absolutely anything you can think of. Um, obviously, new toilet paper, not <laughs> pre-loved <laughs> toilet paper, but pre-loved clothing, pre-loved furniture. Absolutely anything that you would turn a house into a home, we take those donations that would otherwise end up in landfill and we help somebody start oh, I like that, turn a house into a home. That's yeah, probably really that's important. that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. So are there other services you can connect people with? You said something about WA Connect. Absolutely. There's an amazing website called WA Connect. And mm -hmm. what it is, is it connects all the services around your area. Mm -hmm. So it's waconnect.org.au. Okay. And if you just go and type in your home address and you put that you were looking for food or furniture assistance or maybe help to pay your utility bills, um, whatever it is that you are in need of at this time, you can pop it into that website and it will come up with a list of services to um, who can provide you. Okay. Um, so I guess with this, with the organisation, you help people that need help in a crisis. If someone wanted to donate something to help, you know, they want, for instance, people moving house, moving in a state and they need, they've got furniture, good furniture, um, that they want to, you know, they can't sell for some reason and they want to put it somewhere, how would that work? 
So we, um, so we actually do a monthly call out on our website or unless there's something we've run out of beds or we've run out of a specific item, we'll do a post straight away. Um, but the best way is to jump on our website and um, go and fill in a donation form. Mm -hmm. And other ways that you could just contact our donation number direct, send okay. a photo, and then one of our volunteers who coordinates that will find out which area you're in. If you cannot drop it to us in Wangara, we'll do our best to come and try and pick it up. Okay. And what are the list of things that you, you, you take in? Are there things that you don't take? Um, we pretty much take absolutely anything you can think of to start somebody off fresh in a mm -hmm. home. The things we don't take is things that you wouldn't take. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we don't want mattresses that are stained or marked or ripped or disgusting. We don't take furniture that is damaged or torn or broken. Um, for us, it's all about giving somebody that hope, that mm -hmm. respect, that dignity. So if I'm not going to meet the person on the other end and I'm going to give them a couch with a broken arm, and I'm telling them I really care about what happens to them, that for mm. me is not giving that message. Mm. But giving the best of what we have to the person in need gives them the message of hope that they are, they are valuable as a yep. person and we want to do our best to help them, give them a, yeah, give them a hand up. Okay, so just looking around here, I've seen you've, had, you've got food next door, you've got you know vehicles that, that, that do the work for you guys and deliver and pick up and um, you've got bedding, you've got, cooking you've got you've got um, we've literally got everything and we run about nine different services we've got a justice of the peace service which we also do at our outreach so twice a month once in one room once in Joondalup we've got an outreach hub um, and that is a collaboration of 10 different organizations who I've chosen purposefully who do mm -hmm. it for nothing mm -hmm. and we do free haircuts free showers free doggy wash there's food hampers, there's clothing, there's a sausage sizzle, there's a JP service. Um, and there's, it's just like a one-stop shop where, where someone can come. So you help people in a crisis. You've got, you, you've got people that you, know, you, you rely on to give you the, the, com the contents. Yep. And you, I guess you also need volunteers. Absolutely. So volunteers for me are the lifeline of No Limits Perth. Um, our volunteers are yeah, they're everything for us. Um, and... They are in to help us collect, distribute, um, mm. answer the phones, help us with admin, do our community cooking, which we also do once a month. It's literally run as a volunteer organisation. It sounds like you need people to cook in a barbecue and hairdressers to cut hair. And you, oh, you've got the laundry. The laundry. We have a laundry van too. La laundry so van too. Absolutely. So that goes as part of the the doggy washing and the showers, the mobile showers. We've got Jim that comes up from the city with his shower. Um, so that people who are living rough can have a nice warm shower and yeah, just have some dignity back while their washing's in the washing machine getting washed. Then they get their hair cut, get their doggy washed. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a one-stop shop. Yeah. So where where do where do you take where does that mobile activity happen? So um, in Wanneroo, we use the Hepburn Centre in mm. Marangaroo, um, and we do that on the first uh, Wednesday of every single month. And then the washing van also goes there every Monday and Wednesday in between that time as well. Um, and then on a Friday, the washing machine van goes out to Merowa and we use the parking lot of the Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. um, and we use Joondalup Central Park on Joondalup on Grand Boulevard in Joondalup on the third Thursday evening between five and seven of every month. Wow, so you got your work cut out for you. Absolutely. Okay, so I think we've touched on everything that I wanted to cover today. Um, and it's again, it's not. It doesn't. You don't lean towards women, your children, or men. You do all of the above. Anyone that's in, in a crisis. Anyone who's in genuine, genuinely in need, we'll help them. There's yeah. no criteria to mm -hmm. to help. And it's you know no no. Um, what's the word you used before? Um, no judgment. Without judgment. Without We've judgment. all made mistakes. We all have a past. Mm. So we go without our um, judgmental eyes on, <laughs> um, yep. to help whoever needs help. It's, uh, we have no criteria. Well, I'm sure the people that you help are really thankful, but uh, you're Indeed. doing a great job, so Thank the world you. needs more people like you, so well done, Janine. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Not that you need me to tell you that. but oh, you know. No, but without your support, we can't, we can't keep our doors open. Yeah. So without the support of the community, local business, 
um, other charities supporting us, we're closed down. Yeah. So and, and the Lions Club gave you a grant today? The Lions Club have given us $1,000 yeah. today, today. Um, towards our washing machine van, which is run purely by volunteers who themselves might be struggling. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, yeah, absolutely amazing that everyone pulls together and, and yeah, helps. So, so I throw a challenge out to Lions Clubs and Rotary that they could probably do the same <laughs> thing if they've got funds that they want to donate to a reputable charity, no, per, uh, no Limits Perth. Um, again, thank you very much, Denise. Excellent. It's a thank pleasure you. To, uh, to meet with you and interview you. And uh, again, Derek Best, Beacon Fight for Life. Make sure you take the time to smile today.